Uh, I haven't woken up at four in the morning for a long time, so I'm proud of myself. It's freezing here in Australia at the moment. The smell is like wet forest and burnt wood. Okay. One reason I'm not a big fan of one size fits all solutions is that it, it kind of baffles me the lack of personal interest. Trying to figure out the one size fits all of what women are like, of what men are like, of what the system is like, of how we can fit into dating as a lemming. There's something to be said about learning about what women generally like and what men generally are like, but it just comes down to you, Joe or Frank or whatever your name is, you the individual, the subjective individual, knowing what you like and who you are and what fits you, and all that matters is you in front of the person you want. I think all the hyper-focus on, you know, working out women as a plural is sensible as a base because you don't know them. But as soon as they sit down and talk, we have to be engaged with this individual. What ethics and morals are coming out of their mouths and then how we assess them. So for me, it's a bit rich when guys say that, well, there's nothing you can do Women are women, men are men. We're here for a good time, not a long time. It's kind of this lack of standards by which you will pick the best thing that suits you. Not the best thing for everyone else, but the best thing that suits you. Think about your tastes in food. Think about your, your tastes in cars. If you're a guy, if you're a woman, your tastes in clothes, your music. It's all very subjective and we love being proud of what we like in those arenas. But for some reason, Many of us tend to just take whatever music is thrown at us and they just say, well, music is music. It's like, no, you've got your particular music. For me, it's effectively saying like, yeah, I don't care. Just give me something to love. <laughs> it's, I don't get it. I really, really don't get the lack of selfish, personal self-interest. There's something really liberating about knowing what part of life you want to touch realistically touch and being able to act in that direction to get it. Letting the women that are not suited to you by experience and rationally knowing who you are, no matter how hot they are, you let them pass you by. I can appreciate a beautiful car on the road. It's engineering, it's quality, but I also know what cars for me. And let me say another thing. You know what happens without fail? What happens without fail usually is that we all just want to be lazy and have fun and so we don't want to think beforehand as much as we can in terms of preparation. I mean, I did this before when I was younger. I just want to have fun, don't overthink it, just jump into women, work it out as you go. But it's very dangerous as a lot of guys talk about. But there's a lot of us that think we're being careful and intelligent by saying all women are the same and therefore just treat them like bodies. And so you go into the world just having fun and treating them as objects and then those objects ruin you. But then isn't it interesting how afterwards they force you to see them as not an object because of what they did to you, how unfair they were, how they had feelings and lifestyles that didn't match yours. All of a sudden the individual matters afterwards when it's too late. I mean, when you go on a date, you're not going to start talking about men and women generally. Like, at what point does it get to, so what do you like? What do you believe in? How do you spend your days? What have you found you don't like? What have you found you do like? Why hasn't it worked with your exes? What are you now looking for? What have you realized finally in your life? Those are the kind of conversations to be had. So you don't just go into the next date or the next relationship thinking, you know, no idea what I'm doing. Let's hope life works it out for me. I can't do that. I just can't. And I, 
whether I'm being naive or, or not, I, I know that when I put in a little bit of conf- conscious e- effort in terms of doing the best I can and just trying to treat myself well in terms of the choices I make, you know, not just saying, yeah, what the hell, just do it again, hope for the best. And you're doing it again exactly the same way. I, I can't do it. I can't. You guys have probably seen in my channel the last couple of years, I'm always pushing forward, trying to figure things out and trying to move forward and, and go in my direction that I think makes sense. Try this, try that. See, here's the thing. Sometimes we, we have light bulb moments at stages in our lives, like you know when you're 25 or you're 30, there's, you have a big change for the better and you realize a lot of things. You, you might sort of leave the job that you didn't like and you find a better job. It's kind of like, oh, liberating moment when I'm 30 and this is where I want to be. But then at 35 or 40, you might not be comfortable with your 30-year-old decision. I realized that I've been living in a comfort zone in my 30s, which I enjoyed, but I realized in my 40s, it didn't fit. And for the longest time, I didn't know why, because I, I thought, oh no, in my 30s, I worked that bit out, like my my home and how I lived and everything, that's set. And you think that you can just go forward, but sometimes if you change your life in different ways going forward that you actually want to do, it means that you need to let go of other things because that thing going forward cannot work properly or at all unless you get rid of some of the stuff in the past that doesn't fit this new direction. And it's all a very personal thing. I can't tell you what it is. And a lot of you might be thinking, this is very vague, human. Be very clear. Tell me what to do. Well, without being cliche, I can't give you a recipe. There are general recipes like, you know, eat healthy, exercise, reading benefits you, getting enough sleep. Those things are objectively true and they work across the board. They're a one size fits all. But everything else becomes stochastic. Everything else is very personal and subjective. You need to try on the thing that's piquing your curiosity. Do it as sensibly as you can, whether it's with people, hobbies, routines, adjusting your life. The personal conversation for me is better than the one size fits all memes that everyone's spitting out. So, and it's a, a really good way of you protecting yourself when you are on dates because you know what to say. I mean, what are you, what are you gonna say with your suit of armor of the manosphere on dates or out in the world or at the supermarket or at your job or whatever, it will come across to everyone else defensive. And most of the time it'll be rightly taken as defensive. So yes, I I encourage you guys to find your life interesting enough to be serious and frank about it in the way you speak and have real conversations instead of spitting out memes and being defensive and being ideologically correct because it doesn't matter. Look, because if you can't evolve and experiment and try on things and find your way forward in life, I don't want to live as the 30-year-old human that was venting about all my confusion with regard to women. And a lot of the stuff is still true, but I don't want to fight anymore. Like, aren't some of us tired of having the sword out? Don't you want to laugh? Yes, it's interesting to have a very serious conversation, but it's also fun to go to a pub, have a beer with your friend and uh, have a game of pool and a laugh. It's just not all fight all the time. Anyway, I hope that was food for thought. I hope you got something out of that. Hit the like button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Comment underneath and let me know your thoughts. If you want to support the channel, links below. I'll talk to you later. Bye.